Hey producers, Cutman here. Now that Mario and Chill is announced, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I mastered this album. Mastering is kind of this dark art of music production that isn't often explained really well, but it's not too complicated. We're just using a certain kind of effects very, very lightly to give the recording a different quality. We're also gonna be setting the final loudness and adjusting sort of the frequency range and the spectrum of the track. This is the Waves SSL comp based off the legendary SSL mixing boards, nicknamed the Hitmaker back in the 80s and 90s. So check it out. I have my attack set as slow as possible, 30 milliseconds, and my release set as fast as possible, 0.1 seconds. And what's great about this is it basically means the compressor is only working the bare minimum. It has a slow attack, which is allowing transients to come through, but a very fast release so the compression doesn't stick around. It's not squashing our audio, just sort of gluing it together, but allowing the drums and stuff to come through. You can see I'm just using a tiny bit of compression on this. And that's really the key with a lot of mastering effects, is to not drive them so hard, because it kind of sucks the life out of it. See how it's so much more open and kind of like expansive feeling? Now it's kind of crushed. So that's the SSL comp. Usually the very first thing I put on a track because it gives a nice quality that I am really used to producing with. And it also has this kind of great way of making songs produced in a DAW sound a little bit more like they were recorded in a real space. There's just something about this SSL comp that I just think sounds so, so good. Up next, I have two different multibands, both from FabFilter, the Pro and B. I'll show you the first one, which is sort of a traditional four band multiband controlling the bass frequencies, the low mids, the high mids, and the highs. I'll solo each band so you can hear what they're doing. First is the sub bass. You may not be able to hear this super well if you are listening in headphones or something like that. You probably can hear it. If you're listening out of a phone or laptop speakers, it might not sound like anything. Does it? Does it sound like anything? <laughs> But you can see I'm just compressing basically the kicks and a little bit of the low end bass. Moving up to low mids, this is a real key area for this album. I really wanted the low mids to be kind of full and expansive the way that I remember lots of 80s synth music was. So I've boosted it in my multiband as well as compressed it, but just a little bit. You see this line is only moving just a little. Up next are the highs. I'm really compressing these. You can see my threshold knob the little gain meter is going way above where the knob is and it's really slamming down on this. I increased the attack so that the high end of the drums doesn't come through too bright and punchy. This is on a trap beat. This is chill synth wave and I really wanted the highs to be sort of smooth and very kind of chill, I guess. <laughs> that makes sense. And the highs are also similar how I treated the high mids. The highs compress a lot very quickly. And they also release very quickly too because I'm not trying to really slam this. I just wanna treat those kind of peaky bits and not let too much through. One of the great things about FabFilter Pro MB is that you can also use this as kind of like a EQ to boost and cut. So you can see I've cut the bass a little bit because the tracks were produced with a ton of bass, but then I've boosted the low mids and the high mids a little bit to give the track a different character. So check it out, if I took this low mid boost away, really changes the feel of the track, don't you think? And this may look like a big adjustment, but this is plus two dB, this is minus one. So we're only talking about three dB, but it makes a really big difference in the master. This multiband technique of using the multiband not just to compress, but to also adjust the frequency spectrum is something I use all the time because every time we produce a song, you know, they have different qualities. And when we're mastering, we really want to bring out the best qualities of the song, my opinion. The mid range is really important in this album. So I have those kind of accentuated, but with different compressor characteristics. This one, low mids, really subtle. This one, more aggressive, but also um, very quick to release and very not like super noticeable. I, I hope, I hope it's not super noticeable. So up next is this really cool uh, preset that's actually part of uh, FabFilter. It is a low bass expander. So basically from 325 hertz and below, only stuff that's in the middle of the track is expanded, meaning it gets louder. I'll exaggerate this so you can hear what it does. Essentially, it's bringing up the bass without bringing up the kick. 
this makes the bass kind of feel fuller and more present. Uh, also louder, but without adjusting the kick as well, which kind of can lead it to sound a little bit more natural. Check it out. I'll bring it up so you can really hear it. So it's a little crazy, but you see how it ducks down when the kick hits. And the sections that don't have bass get a really big boost, and this adds this kind of low-end presence that I think is really nice. Not really something that was possible back in the day, but interestingly enough, it gives this nice quality that makes me think of that kind of 80s synth music. This preset has the ability for you to also expand the high end, but if, you, if I turn it on, it makes it kind of EDM and a little bit edgy, which I didn't think was appropriate for this track. So um, I left this band off and just did the expander on the mids of the bass. Really nice. Up next, I have a, another FabFilter plugin. This one is Pro C. It's a compressor, and basically all I'm doing is adding a little bit of compression around the kick. You can see it's basically compressing just the kick area, just between 60 and 100 hertz. And the attack is set for just really, really fast, but not ultra fast. So the transient of the kick comes through, but then the body of the kick is compressed a little bit. And when the kick's not playing, for example, in the intro, this plugin's not doing anything at all. It's one of the powerful things of this plugin. You can set just what frequency bands you want it to look at. All right, up next is a real magic plugin for me. I've owned this plugin since I first started producing. I actually got it in a bundle with this SSL compressor I showed you earlier. This is the SSL EQ, also based on these famous mixing boards. And I have found that this plugin is just such an awesome way to bring out like the body and soul of particular parts of the track. So for this, I really focused around 2K, this mid-range reason, because I felt like that was a real heart and soul of the synths. And this is a synthwave album, so check it out. Just a heads up, I have a master limiter on that's gonna make this next step not too painful on your ears, I hope. So check it out, I'm gonna play the song and then I'm gonna boost this 2K band all the way and you'll, you'll get a sense of what this really sounds like. So a lot of the airy kind of um, breathy, almost vocal-like quality of the synths are here. And if I sweep it high, it gets a little, gets a little like not quite, not quite right and too low. Pretty good, but now the bass is getting affected too. That's not really what I want. Let's put it back to where it was. And so basically I crank the volume up all the way and find a good spot on my EQ, then bring it down just as far as I can. See, that's nice. I've also put a little bit of a cut on the bass around 400 hertz where things were getting muddy. Here, I'll crank it up, you can hear it. Oh, that's no good, that's no good. All right, check it out. This is the Waves Vitamin. It's a harmonic exciter. Similar to what we did with EQ, this plugin is allowing us to fill out the different frequency bands with harmonic information. Basically, it's taking a look at the signal and adding more frequencies in each individual range. While the EQ adjusts the frequencies that are there, an exciter actually creates new frequencies. This is a really super useful for filling out sound and making certain parts of the recording sound fuller, which I thought was really important uh, for this Synthwave album. And the areas I really focused on are the, were the mids and low mids, this kind of body of the synth. So check it out, I'll do the same technique, I'll crank up these controls and you'll be able to hear really clearly what they sound like. So let's do the mids first. I'll unsolo you hear the whole track. So that's a lot of mids. But you could see it sounds pleasant, even really to pushing this control. But the idea is to dial in, do as little as we can, because all these controls we're doing, they're all gonna be brought out when the master limiter is put on. So we don't need to get too extreme with our controls. Check out the low mids too. This is really where the bass lives. You really hear each note, each note of the bass now that we have this exciter on the low mids. 
I don't want it to get too crazy. Since I know I want these synths to lead, I have a little bit more on the mid-range and a little bit more on the low mids. And this is kind of working contrary to this multiband I did earlier, which is prioritizing the low mids over the high stuff. If I were to do the same type of treatment on every plugin, it would just overblow the low mids, it wouldn't sound too good. But by increasing the volume of the bass area with multiband and then filling out the the mid-range area with an exciter, I feel like I found a really nice balance. You can also see I've given the low bass boost too. Uh, sorry, laptop speakers, listeners, might not sound like much. But this is the real low end rumble. And then you can see just a little bit of the highs. Too much and all of a sudden it sounds like it wants to be in an EDM track. So that's pretty good. Uh, we're almost done. Wow, this is this has been a quick little walkthrough. Uh, this is Fab Filter Pro Q, my favorite EQ, and you can see I'm doing super duper subtle stuff. Just a little bit of roll off to the bass because it was just a little too harsh. Uh, not a little too harsh, but it was distorting a little bit. So a um, little roll off and a tiny bit of boost around 16k just to give the track a little bit of spark. A lot of producers do low end cuts like this to their tracks and I used to do this all the time but I have started to find that sometimes cuts like this can affect the tone of the bass instrument so when I was doing this album at first I was putting cuts uh, on the low end just to clean it up and I felt like the bass synths and kicks were getting a little anemic kind of like not super not super full sounding and you can see we got frequencies going all the way down to like 12 hertz and um, if we were trying to make a super loud EDM banger, I would say, get rid of those. We need all the headroom we need to get this as loud as possible. But on this synthwave album, this kind of chiller stuff, it actually served the track better to have those super low frequencies left in there. Kind of interesting. In the very end, we have our master limiter, also by FabFilter. Uh, I love this preset, tonally transparent. I think it's great um, for a lot of like sort of chill stuff. Uh, I've tweaked these parameters a little bit, but it's pretty close to what the preset is. And you can see I'm not slamming this track. It is not super loud. Uh, our integrated loudness is at negative nine one, and this whole album is between negative eight and negative 10. Typically, if you wanted this like EDM loudness, we'd push it up close to like negative eight, negative six. Oh, I have automation. Oh. You see it moving on its own? I forgot about that. Let me show you guys the automation too. Because some of you may be wondering, Cutman, what are you doing in Pro Tools, man? Why would you do this to yourself? And the reason, the reason is that Pro Tools has the tightest automation of any DAW I've ever used. And you can see I have these sort of cuts and curves that control the loudness of the song. This is like my top secret mastering step. Clearly it's not a secret, I'm putting it in the video. It allows me to control the loudness of the song and make it progressive over time. And I find this to be a really key component of making a track that isn't boring to listen to because it's not gonna be the same perceived loudness over time. Breakdowns can be quieter. Uh, we can have interesting little drops like this. And those claps, while they're originally produced all at the same volume, by having this little curve, each clap, one, two, three, four, I don't know if you could see them in the waveform, they're in there. One clap, two clap, three clap, four clap. Um, they're each a little bit quieter because of how the automation is coming down. And then I have this quick jump right before the kick starts. See the kick, this rounded one? Right before the kick starts, the limiter jumps back up and we hit the full loudness of the track. So this just gives us a tiny little break one second break in loudness, and um, I think it's really compelling. Check it out. So I have a slow drop in volume here. We stay at this low volume. It's, it's only a couple decibels lower. This comes back in, but now at the low volume, and you see just a tiny bit of limiting. So this is still a very chill, quiet part. Let's look at it big. And here comes that automation. We'll watch this guy move. 
And see, you can barely consciously pick up, but it's added this little bit of dynamics to the song that wasn't there originally. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of how I mastered Mario and Chill. The album is out on May 3rd. You can pick it up on Game Chops, and I'll put a link in the description. And uh, yeah, just wanted to say, you know, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions about mastering, let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to reply. I'm Cutman. Thanks for watching Producer Quest.